If you don't use pipelines in your scrapey projects, you're missing out on some great features that once you start to use, you'll wonder how you ever went without. So in this video, we'll talk through what pipelines are, what they're for, and cover some great use cases for using them. I'll share some code at the end too, that with some minor tweaking, you can drop right into your scrapey projects. And for those who are new, I'm John. I've been scraping for over five years, and I help businesses extract the data they need for analysis. This video is sponsored by Proxy Scrape. More on that a little later. But first, are they really that simple and easy to use? At their core, scrapey item pipelines are classes that handle doing something with an item. And by item, we mean Scrapey's item class. They implement a simple method, the process item, that with the help of the item adapter class allows us to interrogate and modify that scraped item. We can access any item field, modify, check, or drop it completely. This is what makes pipelines so powerful. So let's take a step back and talk about data pipelines in a more broad sense. Think of it like a conveyor belt that you, your data moves down. It has a start point and an end, and then in between we have the opportunity to pick up some of the data and do something with it before putting it back down or even discarding it. Think of toys moving down that conveyor belt, and at certain points they're picked up and checked, and any that don't meet the quality standards are then thrown away. This is what we're able to do with our data. Our pipeline starts with the input of the scraped item, which we can then pick up and check or modify and discard based on our criteria. Once we're all done, all the good toys are presented neatly to the end of the pipeline, which would be a box to load onto a truck, another pipeline with a different function perhaps, or in our case, we're going to insert it into the database. If you've ever used Scrapey's CLI tool and added dash O output JSON or something similar, you've already used one of Scrapey's default feed exporters, which itself is a data pipeline. It takes the item and transforms it into JSON or CSV and outputs a file. But of course, you don't have to use them. You can run successful Scrapey project with no extra pipelines whatsoever. And in fact, if you're running a simple scraper that doesn't need any extra processing of the items, like simply exporting URLs, then there's just no need. However, once you start to scrape more and more data, data pipelines become crucial. And there's a good, a good reason too, which I'll get to. Today's video is sponsored by Proxy Scrape, friends of the channel and the proxies I've been using myself personally for the last year or so. As we know, proxies are an integral part of scraping data. And with Proxy Scrape, we have access to high quality, secure, fast, and ethically sourced proxies perfect for our scraping use case. My preference are the residential ones, which give us the best option for beating captures and any anti-bot protection on the sites we're scraping, something that makes our lives much easier. There's 10 million plus proxies in the pool to use that will all auto rotate. And with unlimited concurrent sessions, adding proxies to our project is simple and extremely effective, especially when combined with something like Scrapey. You have a choice of country too for helping when working on very region specific sites. There's a 99% success rate too and traffic that never expires, which is very, very nice. But if you just want throughput, there may be some data center proxies that have unlimited bandwidth, 99% uptime and no rate limit, all from reputable countries and with IP authentication makes these a very easy to use and attractive option within the right use case. So if you're looking for some top quality proxies, check out Proxy Scrape at the link in the description below. Let's get back to the video. But first, how do we use them then? Well, I'll show you, but there's a couple of important things we need to address first. And that if you don't do this, your pipelines just won't work. Firstly, we must use Scrapey's item class to hold our data. It's that that is this that the pipeline is expecting to see being passed in, and without it, it will fail. I'd always recommend taking a little extra time and yielding out a scrapey item anyway, unless you have a really specific reason not to. They're easy to create and work just like Python's dictionaries. But let me ask you one question. Have you ever put data cleaning directly into your spider code? I know I have, and well, it worked just fine. But I'm now saying that this is not best practice, and to understand why we need to have a dip, quick dip into separation of concerns. This states that our project should be split into sections, and each one addresses a single concern, think job. Back to our toy conveyor belt, we wouldn't want the machine that assembles toys to do the quality control as well, as that would be too much responsibility for one station and will cause huge issues when we're working at scale. And it's the same here. Once we grow our project, potentially with multiple spiders, we need to let that spider do what it does best, crawl and get data. Then we can pass that to our pipelines. As soon as we muddle the water, managing the project will become much, much harder. And trust me, I've been there. Right, so you're on board and ready to start using Scrapey's item pipeline. Let's start with a simple example for cleaning data. I'm going to assume you've created a Scrapey project and it looks a little bit like this. 
Here's our original set of data. We can see that the price is in a string. The product ID is also a string and this checklist has duplicates in and the price is in a different format again. So what we wanna do is we wanna change the price uh, into a good format for both instances, remove the duplicates and change this to a integer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up our pipelines file and all I've got so far is I've imported in drop item because we're going to add in a case to drop some items if we don't need them. So the first pipeline we're gonna create is going to be our uh, product ID pipeline. This is gonna change it to an integer. So we need to give it a name and a class and then we have this define our process item function, our method, which is the main method we're going to be using. It takes in self, the item, which is a scrapey item, which is why that's important, and the spider itself. Then we say that our adapter is equal to the item adapter for this specific item. This means we have access to all those fields. And then when we have that, we can access the information that we're after that we want to check or do something with. And I've done adapter.get with this because that means if it doesn't have this field, it's going to return none rather than throw an error if it does exist we're going to update it to an integer and we're going to return the item in this one i've also decided that if it doesn't exist i.e the product doesn't have a product id i'm going to drop it this just means that products that don't have that id will be dropped out of the pipeline and will be no more the next pipeline is going to be for our price and this is the first price not within the check and again it's the same process process item and then the adapter of the item then we get the price field and all i'm doing here is i'm removing the dot from that field so we had we now have 69000 or uh, as a string and then i'm changing it to an integer else i'm setting the price to none so if it has no if the item comes through with no price we're just going to set it to none and then we're going to return that item back out fairly straightforward so if we come back to our thing what we would have done right now is we would have changed this to an integer like this and this is going to be updated to this so like that now there's a few different ways you can handle prices in python i tend to do it like this i find it's quite easy to manage um, although you can use a decimal you can't use a float though because it won't calculate properly because you'll end up with wrong um, calculations from adding and subtracting decimals back to the pipeline now we need to handle the slightly more complicated one and this is the check pipeline again starts off the same way and then we're basically turning our list into a set and then back into a list because within python a set cannot have duplicates so they will automatically get removed so this is going to solve our duplicate issue from here what we're going to do is we're going to get the index of this uh, element so we can update it later then we're going to do our replace with the dot and the pound symbol then we're going to convert it to an integer so it matches the other price in the price field and then update the list with that same index with our new item and then I'm also updating the currency field to have GBP because it is a pound symbol in the uh, in front of the number for the price then I'm just returning the item and that is it so once you have all of that changed you need to come to your settings and then search for pipelines in your scrapey project and then you need to uncomment it and add your pipelines in here so that they run. You'll notice that they have a number at the end. And this just decides which order they run in. And this is important because if you were to save to a database, you would wanna make sure you clean all the data first before you do so. If I come over to my other project, you'll see here that I have a stock available pipeline that happens before the SQLite no dupes pipeline. And if I show you that here, Here's the stock available one, very, very similar to what we were just doing before, adapter.get and checking it. And then we have our SQLite pipeline here. Now this has an init, which is slightly different to the other ones. And it basically gonna do your standard SQLite stuff here, connecting to the database or creating it, giving, getting a cursor, make this one bigger, then executing, creating the table if it doesn't exist. This will obviously happen every time the pipeline runs. Um, so we have that table set up how we like it. Then we're just going to, in our process item, we're just going to check if that item that we are holding in this pipeline exists already. If it does, we'll find it and then we'll just, you know, tell the spider through the logger that it, um, tell ourselves through the logger that it does exist and nothing else will happen. If it doesn't, we're going to insert it, commit it to the database and then return the item. Back to our original project and once you run it again you'll end up with this here and you'll see now that we have our price in both instances in the same format and our product ID as an integer and the check with no extra duplicate data 
and the currency of the GBP here. And that is done for every single product because it went through our three pipelines. I have to admit, when learning about this the first time, I wasn't able to completely see all of the use cases. And I was happy filling up my spider file with split and replace. So what I want to do here is highlight some of the things both Scrapey Doc suggests, but also my own personal uses, use cases for pipelines. I'll try and break these down into about four categories. Given now that we understand our pipeline is going to take data in, move it down like a conveyor belt, the most obvious first one is to implement, uh, is to take our item and save it into a database. Within one pipeline class, we can initialize, create tables, check for duplicates, and add our scraped item to the database. This one's for SQLite, which is a good option for starting out, but you could, of course, use any database that you like. The Scrapey documentation shows one for MongoDB. But before we save our data, we will want to clean it, which is what we did earlier. And this is another great use case for our pipeline. Again, we take the initial item and we can now process each field, removing things that we don't want. I've used this for things simple as correcting prices, removing currency symbols, or removing white space and any unnecessary characters around names. Any parts of the data you might want to remove from any field would come in here. So I work a lot in e-commerce and the main piece of data here is pricing and getting it into the same format and data type before saving is very important. So I usually add in a pipeline specifically to clean up and modify the price field. In our example, removing the currency symbol, but also using it to add a new field with a text representation instead is quite common and making sure that the data type is consistent using a decimal or a string even. Other things like adding date and timestamps would also come in here. This one's probably the most important and also the most useful, but also the most vague, the business logic required for your use case. This could be anything, but here's some examples. Checking stock flags and updating data, combining fields and updating information like VAT and taxes, checking dates for posts and discarding any over a certain threshold, and seeing if any item is on sale and adding a percentage discount field. The final use case is checking the integrity of the data, making sure all the fields contain something, setting default values, and acting on the item if there's something missing. But these are just examples. If you want to see me use these in a project, you're going to need to watch this video right here next.